Hey everybody, the old captain here, and uh, I have gone and seen the movie The Big Short. I want to give you a little bit of a uh, review of it. Uh, somebody actually said, I'm going to pay you to go see it. You just let me know where you and your girlfriend want to go. I'm like, no, don't worry. I was ever, I, I was going to go see it anyway. And I saw it. It was actually against my girl. She's like, I want to see it with you. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll wait. And I couldn't wait. And since I'm an asshole, I went and saw it anyway. And I, I told her I'd go see it with her again. And she's like, <laughs> she really didn't say that. But that's just the story I'm going to tell you. Anyway, so the movie. The movie is definitely worth seeing. Um, and I know a lot of people are kind of like looking at me like, oh, was it real? You know, because people ask, because I wrote the book Behind the Housing Crash and I was there. And, you know, it was kind of part of my life. And that's why I was going to see this regardless of who the director was. Um, but it is a different take on the housing bubble than what I experienced because uh, my experience was on the ground level. I was a credit analyst and I was the guy who the banks employed to, you know, look at the quality and credit worthiness of these loans and then they ignored it. Um, <clears throat> the movie really focuses more on New York and the... Um, upper level macroeconomic markets like uh, the mortgage markets uh, where it's kind of like okay can we make a short and make billions that that's the level that this movie is at which is good for the average American consumer because you don't need to know about my boring level of me going to work and look at houses out in Chaska because uh, no one's ever heard of it uh, and if you really want to understand the housing bubble and the uh, financial crisis, uh, this movie really it, it lends itself very well because it is at the macro level. It, this is what these guys are looking at. There's a great scene, great scene where they send these guys down to Miami and they like are investigating all these houses. They're like, there's only one guy in every house here. Like, of every ten. One guy in every ten houses here. Like, what's going on? Like, why... So, uh, and, and that's kind of what I, you know, I was on the bottom end of it, but I, I witnessed that when I actually had to go and like do some, they call it due diligence, and I'd go and I'd look, I'm like, there's no one here. What's going on? Uh, but anyway, uh, so the movie is very good. There, there's, it's, do you want to see it? I guess that's the, the butt end. Maybe. As excited I was about this movie, I, I just can't give it the endorsement like, yeah, go see it in the theaters now. Because what they did is they broke it up. It's kind of like a soap opera where it's like they always got three or four different stories running at once. <clears throat> and it's not just one story focused on a group of people doing something or other. So you got, uh, what is it? There's one story of these underdog garage head funge managers that you kind of cheer on the entire time and uh, that's perhaps no actually that's not perhaps I, I associate with them a little bit but that would be the type of people that I'm I most associated with in this movie but it's, it's still a damn good wonderful colorful aspect to this movie and then there is the uh, the mid-range, you didn't suck enough cock to get into Goldman Sachs type douchebags that uh, figured it out. And that's, Steve Cottrell fucking carries the movie. It's fucking brilliant. That's kind of more of the uh, area that I would associate with. And then there's the lone quant, the statistical genius, the fucking um, idiot savant who's brilliant with math. And that's played by Christian Bale, and he's like in this other hedge fund. Man. And I thought it was all just one group. No, no, it, it's it's a, a soap opera of all these four or three different type of people. And whereas that kind of paints a really colorful picture of the movie, it doesn't, it, it takes away from a very succinct, like, here's what happened. So it really lacks a bit of focus in the entire movie where it's like, well, what's going on? Da, 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 da. Now, one thing I do like about the movie, where you think it's dragging on, but it's not, and just let me explain to you why it isn't, and that is where they all take their positions, like a bunch of really brilliant genius people take their positions and bet against the housing market. 
And the problem with that is that brilliant geniuses are on the statistical outliers way out here, and it takes a while for the rest of the normal people, really, really normal people, and then the really boring average fucking idiots, we call them Ivy League people, to fucking realize what's going on. And it's the classical quote of markets can remain more irrational longer than you can remain solvent. And so the element of how these guys borrow debt to take positions and bet against the housing market didn't play. And they like they give you time dates, they give you time stamps where it's like December 2006. I'm like, yeah, okay. And then and and also in like an hour of the movie passes by and they say April 2007. I'm like, so this whole tortuous event occurred in four months. That's how much debt and leverage and interest you guys were incurring. <clears throat> Just saying, I'm no fucking Wall Street genius, but it seems a little bit. Anyway, uh, so one of the great lessons of this movie is how, not how, how much risk these people took borrowing against their positions to short them and, and into the unknown like because you don't look you had all of the United States financial and governmental institutions backing these people up like they were gonna like let this thing go forever and so you had a couple of true mavericks true vagabonds true rebels betting against it with whatever minuscule financial resources they had <clears throat> and then Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley and all these other guys would <coughs> you sick yes would bet against them and but they had all the money in the world to outlast their position and these idiots borrowed against it but that's the way you make money which I understand but then the crash comes and then these guys start to realize they're going to start to make money and then and then everybody's vindicated and proven right uh, just two things I really didn't like about the movie one was the soap opera like aspect of the movie where it's like here's the story of these people going on here here's the story of these people going on here here's the story of these people going on here here's the story of these people going on here and the other aspect when i walked out of the movie at, at the very end is when everything's going to hell everybody's been vindicated and everyone's like what's going to happen to the people and this is where the director obviously has this political agenda I don't know the director's name. I knew someone says, well, the director is this leftist, blah, blah, blah. And he sent me a link like, yeah, and he is a leftist. I won't, I won't deny that. But Steve Cottrell is like, well, what concerns me is the average people in three years are going to say they're going to blame it on immigrants and poor people. And I'm like, yep, done, gone, walked out. So I've never saw the end of the movie because... It's a really, here, here's if anything that uh, I can make a statement that would stand or maybe gain some traction in society. The real tragedy is he did a damn, damn good job, pretty damn good job of explaining like how financial markets were. Oh, there's this great scene where like the two fucking rookies from their garage head fu hedge funds, they, they, uh, Everyone in Lehman Brothers is getting laid off and shipped out of the building and they score themselves some passes and they get in they walk around Lehman Brothers like trading floor and they're like this was it this was it I was expecting more I was expecting things to be more adult and it's it, it's brilliant so this guy takes this brilliant pinnacle and accurate everything up to that point in the movie had been like yeah 98% accurate just just brilliant and then he's got a, he, this, this cocksucking, fucking, limp dick, faggoty, gay fuck. And it's not an insult to gays. It's just an insult to this straight man trying to be straight. He's got to get his fucking leftist thing in. And, and, and they say, um, what did they say? Oh, yeah, they're going to blame it on immigrants and poor people. I'm like, where the fuck did that come from? Where the fuck did that come from? I mean, Steve Cottrell must have, like, been choking on his words to say that because the guy's actually an actor probably actually has some productive value to his life it's like why did you ruin it with that it has nothing to do with like really really we're, we're gonna blame it on immigrants and last i recall everyone's blaming it on a bankster scum so should you see the movie 
Are you bored? Yes. If you're bored, go see the movie. If you're like me and you have a little bit of a higher standard, no, wait for it to come out on Netflix. You can kind of watch it. But what's sad about it, there's really nothing that would really explain... Here's the other... Okay, let me... Before I get ahead of myself. It's not going to explain anything that you don't already know. And when they try to explain it, the average person is just going to get lost. Like... I could keep up with it, and I, I often found myself laughing like, ha, ha, and no one else laughed with me because I realized, like, oh, yeah, these guys didn't work in the end. They don't understand how funny that really fucking was. So uh, you're, there's going to be some things lost on you unless you, like, you were in the industry or the biz. But you know what? At the end, when he gives you the big fuck you, it's like evil white people trying to protect their nation and makes it an immigration issue. Yeah, fuck them. Don't go see it. I mean, just like go rent it, go get it on the red box. Um, it doesn't really teach anything you don't know. Uh, it portrays it in a very colorful and interesting story. It's like watching a soap opera. This is happening in this family, in that family, in this family. But in the end, it's it's nothing you guys really don't know. I'm I'm being deadly serious. It's, it's nothing you guys haven't figured out. Um, and I don't mean to be like self-propagating, uh, but seriously, my book, Behind the Housing Crash, will probably teach you a lot more about what happened and what led up to the housing bubble than this. This does give you, I will admit this, this does give you like what's going on in Wall Street and people freaking out and how some true fucking ballsy mavericks fucking figured it out uh, and capitalized on it. But... In the end, it wasn't going to survive anyway. So these are guys that just happen to like arbitrage. These are arbiters. They're arbitragers. They arbitrage. They capitalized off of this. But if you want to like get more of a personal, in-depth, like, oh, how did this happen? Da, 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 my book's better. I'm, and I'm not. I'm not saying that. I mean, seriously, my book is better. It really is. So, uh, good movie. Yeah, go see it. Yeah, it, it. It's worth going to see it in the film. Yeah, in the theater. Yeah, absolutely. But if you're like me, very picky, very fickle, like, no, it's got to be like fucking Goldfinger of James Bond. Nah, you don't have to see it. You could totally rent it. So, anyway, that's my opinion of The Big Short. Great movie. Don't get me wrong. Uh, just, just not, not up to my very fickle standards. But also uh, very soap opera y and, and and a little bit longer it took to get to the points it wanted to make. So best of luck, tools.